pour la géothermie profonde. Euh, Regarding deep geothermal energy, there is one essential question. Where does the heat come from that we're trying to use? A few questions must be asked. What is the uh, heat flow that comes permanently out of the uh, surface of the Earth, and how it is, is it distributed? And when then we will uh, have a look at what happens in uh, Europe and especially in uh, continental France. Heat comes out of the uh, surface of the globe everywhere. This graph shows that permanently a few watts or a few fractions of what rather come out of the Earth's surface. This uh, heat flow is very, very limited. Just to give you an, an order of uh, magnitude, we're talking 90 <coughs> milliwatts per square meter. So for one square meter of uh, the surface of the globe, and less than a watt of heat come out. If we were to uh, ignite bulbs uh, with this energy, we would uh, need, uh, in order to ignite a few bulbs, the equivalent of a football pitch. So again, a very limited uh, flow of heat that comes out of the uh, surface of the Earth and that we're trying to use. If we look more closely at this picture, we see the distribution, which is uh, uneven. To begin with, there's a difference in the way heat is distributed between the continents and the oceans. On the continents, less heat is distributed, approximately 60 milliwatts per square meter, whereas uh, under the ocean surface, uh, bottom, it is slightly higher. So this is a figure that we need to remember. On the continents, 60 milliwatts are disseminated for each square meter. 90 milliwatts uh, is a figure that must be compared with other figures. The 90 milliwatt figure is extremely small if we compare with the uh, heat that we receive from the sun. On this picture, we see the distribution of uh, heat received by the uh, entire globe from the sun. Each square meter receives a, an, average of, an average of 342 watts, four times greater than the quantity of heat coming from below our feet, 90 milliwatts again, whereas uh, we receive 342 watts from the sun. Using geothermal energy means only using a very small part of the energy that uh, can be found on the Earth's surface. Another order of magnitude that we could bear in mind, in France, so we receive approximately 150 watts per square meter. But again, with only one square meter, if we were to convert the energy in electricity, it would be enough to ignite quite a number of uh, bulbs. So we're talking about two very different orders of magnitude. This graph summarizes uh, what I have just said. If we take one square meter of ground, again, there is much more heat coming from the sun, which can be felt much more than the heat coming out of the ground, 90 milliwatts or 0 0.09 watts per square meter. This small fraction of heat is what we're trying to use when we perform a geothermal energy recovery. A few figures just to illustrate what I'm saying, the figures are quite limited. However, geothermal energy is uh, the second uh, source of energy dissipation on the surface of the globe. As I said, it's a very small figure compared with the solar energy, but still it is greater than the energy dissipated by the tides or the energy dissipated by volcanoes. It's almost 100 times greater than the quantity of energy dissipated uh, during earthquakes and seismic activity. This geothermal flow of energy, 4.6, uh, 10 to the power of 13, is an order of magnitude comparable with the world uh, energy production. 
in absolute terms, in ideal conditions, we should be able to cover the need, the need of the entire globe for energy only with these 46 terawatts of uh, geothermal energy. 46 terawatts, so 4.6, 10 to the power of 13, come out of the uh, surface of the Earth permanently. Where does the heat come from? Just to keep this simple with a few key figures, the essential part comes from the uh, Earth's mantle. Production happens in the core. <coughs> there is also some heat production in the mantle. There is the initial cooling, 18 terawatts. But something that is not always fully understood, the fact that part of the heat comes from radioactivity in the upper part of the uh, lithosphere. The heat produced is released. 46 terawatts come out of the uh, ground permanently. Heat is released permanently, but there are differences between the continents and the oceans. And even within continents, there are huge variations among the different geographical areas. Here we have a map showing the distribution of the heat flow in uh, Europe. Blue corresponds to 60 milliwatts per square meter as being the continental average. In France, in eastern France particularly, there is a large area where the uh, flow exceeds the average flow of 60 uh, milliwatts, whereas in Italy or around the uh, Adriatic Sea, uh, temperatures are much lower. The same goes for South Turkey. So there is a huge contrast. In some places, uh, conditions are more favorable, and in others, less. This can be more easily understood if we say that it all has to do with geodynamic uh, parameters. The uh, formation of the ARP chains uh, contributes to uh, the heat flow release. And for instance, the uh, Aegean subduction contributes to the uh, specific situation that we find in Turkey. There is a tight connection between the geology or geodynamic uh, characteristics and the distribution of a heat flow. If we uh, zoom in on metropolitan France, we can see that the distribution is uneven. In central France and eastern France, the flow is greater, especially in eastern France in the Alsatian region, whereas the uh, flow is uh, much greater than uh, the average uh, 60 uh, milliwatt per square meter figure. In Elsass, uh, sometimes uh, the figures reach 300 milliwatts per square meter. And uh, using this uh, energy, especially uh, underground at deep, uh, with deep uh, holes, uh, can be quite interesting. And especially in this area, large projects have been developed, uh, for instance, the one in Sous-Forêt. Sous